Orca puts it up. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so it's uh, 6.15 on September 27th, and we've had the, um, this meeting announced um, on the website, uh, an email to interested party, and posted physically in three public places, so I think that we're legally allowed to go forward with our, our meeting here tonight. Um, no. Hello, everybody. My mind there. Um, so, um, before we start, um, we don't have a whole lot on the agenda. I don't know if anyone here or on uh, on Zoom has anything that they would like to add to public comments at this time or not. I'd like to add Kate space. Yep. Um, are we limiting the discussion time? Yeah, I was going to get to that. Put it back, Put in, it back in there. It doesn't work. He puts it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no garbage can. <laughs> Better for the next guy. Um, so, um, so, yeah, we'll have um, a lot, five minutes um, per speaker on that, and at least to go through. And if they have more to say, we can come back at it. But um, So I'll we'll start. Anyone else have any additions? Nope. All right. So we um, start off with the minutes from the last meeting of September 13th. And um, they look good to me. Extensive. I second. No, well, I didn't move oh. yet, but I moved to approve uh, the yeah, minutes. Yeah, very long. <laughs> All right. Pass second. Yep. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Cool. Um, let me get those. And the um, the scheduled guests that we had tonight are not coming, so we're going to table the conversation about the Murray Farm Solar Project. And um, do you want to talk about the office closure in the first week of October to attend to attend town fair trainings? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we're going to close the office. Um, we may have some days that will be open. Um, I think there's some um, law enforcement that we don't need to attend, but each day there will be a different topic that um, I'm opening to any of the members or officers who want to come in and mm -hmm. listen, um, but they'll be all day events. So, so those would be uh, Zoom meetings here in the yeah. office? Yeah, okay. virtually, yeah. Right. Um, is there anywhere that would be posting what the uh, agenda, what the topics are that is going to be covered? Sure. Right there. All right. 2021 Town Fair. Yep. Sounds good. Um, Joan, you're here. If we'd, um, we missed you last meeting, but um, what have you got for us tonight? Well, I missed you too. <laughs> um, so, let's see. A couple of things. Um, the generator grant has just been fully approved. Uh, so that's good news. Julie uh, received some information from the Department of Public Service and uh, forwarded it to me. So Dune, um, I don't know if you got it too. There's some uh, technology that I'm not up to date on, uh, but there's something called a, a DocuSign document. Right. Which through, it's a subrecipient grant. Um, and I tried to open it so I could at least go through it and make sure it looked okay before I passed it along to you for signature. But I wasn't able to open it, and maybe because I'm not, I don't have that on my computer or something. So I was just wondering if you got it. Um, I they, when did you when did you send it? Uh, I actually didn't. Maybe I didn't send it because I don't think I could. Oh, okay. I, and it would be something I'm just not knowing what to do on my end. I received uh, it last week, the end of last week. Julie, do you, you have um, it still, right? Hmm. I do have it, and he can sign on there, so. Okay, so I'll, I'll check in on, on that, because I... It, you guys are really faint. I don't know if you can hear me okay, but... We can hear you good. Um, you. I don't I don't remember seeing that, so I'll check in with Julie in the office and um, and take care of that. Okay, and if there's, if there's a lot of stuff on it that you want me to look over first and just let you know if I see anything... Okay. Embraced. Issues, um, you okay. know, feel free to do that. I, I think it's just a signature, yeah. And it, DocuSign's very easy, yeah. 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 There are some grant terms on there, isn't there? 
Uh, it did. It like I couldn't get in without doing like a signature, so I didn't dare. You can um, create one. You, can. you have to create a signature in order to view the document. Right. Okay. But it's pretty. It's easy. And once you do it, you're not like signed up for anything. It doesn't cost anything, and you're not signing the document. Right. Okay. Yep. I can help you with that. All right, so you're, you're concerned, Joan, that there might be some small print that we want to pay attention to there? Well, yeah, you know, these federal grants, um, I'm not expecting anything, but <laughs> you just right. never know. Okay. All right. But, but um, go ahead and, and, you know, if you, if it looks good to you, go ahead and sign it and send it in. Um, and then if there's a way you could save a copy just so I can keep it in the digital files, yeah. uh, that would be great. And I... Uh, well, I can't remember now exactly what the terms are in terms of when we can actually start, you know, put this, put it out to bid again and get it done. Um, but I think we sh should have time this fall to do that before the winter winter comes in. Um, let's see, going on to the next thing, uh, as I uh, reported in my notes for the last select board meeting, um, we have the construction grant now from Federal Highway Administration for the con uh, construction of the West Hill Bridge replacement. Um, and what they approved was the original amount we submitted two years ago, I might have told you this already, for 600,000. And right now the cost estimate that um, our, the designers VHB, VHB are using is Construction cost, actual construction cost, cost of six hundred sixty-three thousand dollars, six 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 three four one four, um, and that's before there's a ten percent contingency, which may or may not be a necessary part of the budget. Um, but in any case, um, Brian Austin and I were kind of exchanging emails about what to do to to cover that if that is indeed the actual cost. We won't really know what the cost is going to be until we put it out to bid. And that will be sometime early next year. January, February is what we're aiming for now. Um, and Brian feels it may be high. Uh, but as I said, we won't know until we actually get the bids back in. So uh, given that uncertainty, um, we agreed that we would look for some additional funding in case we needed it. And the primary responsibility is on the shoulders of the Forest Service. Um, Brian was uh, assuring me that that was the case. That you know, if we don't find any other funding, the Forest Service is it will find it one way or another. Um, but I did reach out to Chris Bump at VTrans, and he came back with the suggestion that VTrans could. Um, make use of the funds, the defunded funds for the Mount Cushman culvert replacement, which was $175,000. And um, with some internal approvals and review of documents and various other things, he may be able to um, uh, give us that 63,000 and change that we might need. So that just um, started late last week. So they're looking at documents and going through some kind of internal review process and will let us know whether that money could be available for the bridge construction. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. Okay. Um, and then otherwise, I'm just in the process of compiling costs and comparing them with uh, Julie and, and Christian's numbers for total cost of uh, the Nason Brook culvert project, which is pretty simple and straightforward. Basically the, uh, the cost of the contract, um, which was 213,605 plus uh, we had a small amount of, well, about $1,200 or so in costs from Cricket for her engineering oversight. And then the cost of the, uh, the permanent and temporary easements we purchased from three landowners, which was about 1,400. So um, the total cost of the project overall with all those things was 217,000. And uh, the grant amount we have from VTrans, it was a structures grant is 187,614. So we came out pretty well on that. Um, and then Sky Hollow, uh, that was recently completed by Cooter and the crew. And grant amount there is 17,240. 
and the cost uh, is about 20, somewhere between 20 and $22,000. And um, the state grant will pay up to 80% of our total cost or, but not more than the 17,240 that they committed to us. So we'll come in pretty close in terms of covering that cost. And that's all I have, unless you have any questions for me. Joan? Uh, Vic, yeah. Yeah, how, what was the final uh, amount on the um, On the generator? generator? Yeah. <laughs> you have to ask. Um, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I don't we got all we asked either. for, though. Um, I just, I can, I can find time. My file over All right. Here. Well, it, it can keep. Uh, I just yeah. Yeah. Just to so really imagine, remember. shoot me a note. I remember ten. Yeah, so, yeah. Sorry. I can get that to you. Yeah. They're um, they're, they're um, Pat and Frank are saying they're remembering around ten thousand. Yeah, I thought it was somewhere. That's uh yeah, ten thousand five maybe. Yeah. Yeah, something okay. like that. Yeah, and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, the thousand seven hundred and seventy-five dollars for the generator. Yeah. Uh, Great. Okay. Hopefully, costs have not gone up too much at all since then. Hear that, Vic? No. Um, Pat Scott, notes ten thousand seven hundred seventy-five. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Joan. Okay. Um, Tony, you're here um, this week to uh, represent the library. What's up? Well, things are pretty much the same as they have been, but we did sell out the first printing of the cookbook. So I guess they're working on mm -hmm. another printing. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You guys hear that in Zoom land? No. The, no. First, the first printing of the cookbook from the library sold out. So they're looking at uh, doing a second printing. Raise your hands if you already got one. <laughs> All right, there's one. <laughs> What's cooking tonight, Rob? <laughs> All right. Um, is that it, Tony? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, Highway Cooter's not here, but they um, they got the mowers and they they're um, they're proceeding to mow around town. So um, that was a little bit of a slow start, but they got two machines and they're they're working flat out now. Um, Terry, you're here. Um, I heard you talking about um, Thrill Kills property. Is that about utility issues or what? No, no, that was she, my question. I was just oh, just that. another question. Yeah, yeah. right away there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're all in the deeds because that was all federal money. Yeah, right. I was just being a realtor. Okay, separate separate topic. <laughs> but do you have anything to to add tonight? I ordered those pumps. Okay, yeah, and they're quite a bit less money. Good. So, less yeah. than you expected. Yeah, a lot less. Yeah. They'll um, be here probably in eight to ten weeks. So, uh, Terry was saying, on the, for the benefit of you know, the computer, if you didn't hear him, he did order the two new pumps for the. Um, How much were they each? No, seventy five hundred. Seventy five hundred about a piece, which is a lot less than what we were worried about, and they'll be here in eight to ten weeks or so. So. It'll be something we'll probably do in the spring. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they'll be ready to go. And, and they're available. Yeah. And they're available. Yeah, that's the main thing. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, um, Jeffrey. Jeff, you're, um, you're back. How's, uh, how's your trip? Uh, my trip? Um, my trip was involved hauling a U-Haul from Westminster to Rochester, so it wasn't too long. <laughs> it, it was it was the loading and the unloading, and then uh -huh. finding the place for everything. That's that's the tricky part. Yeah, that's a trip. Um, so let's see a little update. Uh, GMP um, has put out an RFP for the resiliency zone. Um, it is on. It went out a week ago today. Um, it's up on their website. Um, what else to know about it? Uh, what they um, they put out a, a timeline for the project. Um, they have referenced both 
a four megawatt generation field and a 150 kilowatt um, generation field. Um, they are asking their the bidders to be creative about it. Um, I was able to confirm with GMP today that um, what I thought was the case was that the only way we get four megawatts of generation is with the removal of the entire school. Um, we can get the 150 um, kilowatts of generation uh, from the ball field and the soccer field immediately adjacent to the school. Um, they have uh, reserved the right not to take any um, bid, not to approve any bid. Um, so it's uh, it's kind of a fishing exhibit or expedition right at the moment uh, with respect to that. I also followed up today with Energy Efficiency Investments Incorporated to find out what they have uh, identified in terms of uh, opportunities for savings and, and uh, scope of project necessary to achieve those kinds of savings. I have not heard back from them yet. Um, and uh, we have the Rochester Area Climate Initiative Community Forum coming up on October 7th. Um, Hopefully you're noticing uh, flyers around town and through a direct mailing on that. It's October 7th from 6 to 8.30 via Zoom. And then there will be hopefully an in-person at the Rochester Elementary School outdoors um, on uh, October 12th. That would go from 5 to 6.15. That would be a chance for folks who are not able to connect via Zoom in the earlier meeting to uh, have their voices heard about uh, the topics uh, um, that are listed on that flyer. Um, uh, at the Harvest Fair, the Valley Energy and Climate uh, Action Committee, as well as uh, um, the Rochester Area Climate Initiative uh, were represented in uh, Vic uh, and Maureen Gannon, um, Frank uh, Russell, Chris Williams, and I all manned the table uh, at different parts of the day and did a lot of talking to people and handing out that particular flyer. Um, and uh, there will be a phone bank set up as well to try to get a real good community turnout uh, for that event uh, coming up on the 7th. Um, Chris, uh, Kristen uh, sent me a note about uh, increased expenses at the fire department and the town clerk's office. Um, that was the August 9th bill. A uh, quick look at those, uh, what I see is that there are two more days in the billing period for each of those two accounts than there were the last year. So that does make them, um, that's a natural reason why that would be higher. Um, I don't see anything on the heating degree days that it explains it whatsoever, but I'll take a little closer look uh, to see if we can pin down a particular day or event uh, that might call for that. But again, I think most likely it is the, the two more days of, of billing in 2021 than existed in the billing for 2020. Um, that's about all I have to report. So with the RFP for the, um, the resiliency um, solar array, is that what kind of um, time frame did they put on that? Like you said, it's a little bit of a fishing expedition, but there's um because there's a lot of lot of things that um, yeah let's see the like that um, be good to gather the information but um, I would I would anticipate that they're gathering um, information not expecting to give out contracts right away because there's a lot of decisions that would be need to made be made around the school. Yes, um, the initial uh, schedule. Um, was for the uh, posting of the RFP September 20th. Um, October 1st, they are, event is the initial indication of intent to offer, which is non-binding. October 15th, question and answer submission deadline. Answers will be posted within two weeks. Uh, mid offers and, and required documentation. Um, and including information necessary to populate a draft form of agreement. 
December 3rd deadline for GMP to notify each offer regarding the selection status of each offer. December 17th, uh, 2021 deadline for selected offers to submit draft interconnection applications. Um, there is information later. Uh, the, the actual and GMP reserves the right to select zero offers as an outcome of the RFP. And I should have highlighted it, but I didn't. Um, their, their construction would actually be far down the road, um, several years, actually. I can get that for you. I'm just not finding it. Let me quick look uh, here. All right, yeah, because it, it seems that there would um, still needs to be some elbow room allocated for the decision process around the um, um the school the school right. yeah yeah absolutely yeah all right well um anyone else have questions for no. all right thank you jeff yeah commercial yeah. operation date pursuant to the terms of the agreement which should occur no later than july of 2023 and there's an uh, also a one-time six-month extension possible so it's a couple years down the road a couple years down the road all right okay yeah um, thank you so um getting on to the old business um last meeting we tabled um um one item on the high school repurposing project discussion pat you're going to look into an insurance issue around what the granting permission to access the building in the meantime what did you yes, find out and what i got from uh vermont leagues the cities and towns was that because the town is not the owner of the property um that passive our insurance carrier um, was not interested in in coverage for that but they had a good suggestion that the uh, consultant and the engineering firm working with the consultant their insurance coverage would be sufficient to cover while they're in the building working it should actually be their coverage not because they're on the job. Yeah, and they're a subcontractor of ours. So um, it can skip over us, and okay. that was sufficient. Um, they did provide us with both um, liability and workers' comp coverage binders, and we submitted them to the supervisory union, and um, they said, great, we didn't even expect to get this. So we're, we're more than double covered on that. All right. Right. Cool. Thank you. Um, then, um, does that mean we have to vote on something on that? No, I don't think so because we we're not. Right? We, yeah. we've, we voted to approve it right. pending the results of pending the insurance. Results of that. So okay. I think so we're, we're ready to sign it and yeah. hand it over to either to Tori or yep. Vic. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, Frank, you were going to follow up with um, Joan about long-term implications of the West Hill Bridge project. Did you right. We, she kind of answered that. I thought she did, yeah. 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 Okay. So that's all pretty well said. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. there's, if they back out of it, there's not much we can do. We'll have some, some rights of way mm -hmm. already there, so yeah. we'd have to probably look into whatever we could do financially to put a bridge in there mm -hmm. of some sort mm -hmm. to appease this. Back out, but yep. But if it they, sounds like it's it's happening. Too. Yeah, it does sound like it's a go. Right. So hopefully. Um, Terry, you had something about skate space you wanted to talk about. Well, last winter it was kind of a cluster down there, mm -hmm. and we had to make six, seven trips down there to foot it, and you know, it's... And that was with the new liner, right? Yeah, but, you know, it needs a lot of work. And they got a sizable donation 
and they were going to give it to the fire department and we said that you know maybe you should take this money and spend it on the skating rink and bring it up to where we don't have to do this mm -hmm. you know granted we not, haven't got a problem with flooding it but i don't want to flood it you know seven eight times a year because somebody's on it with chains they're on it before it freezes i mean Somebody's got to get it together. And besides that, it's settled now. And one corner only has like an inch of water in it. But that could have been all taken care of. I mean, even if you drilled and put some 2 by 4s on top so we could, you know, get, you know, 2, 3 inches of water on, you know, 3, 4 inches of water on that one corner. Because saw that does break. Right. You know, it just seems like nobody's working on it. It's getting late in the year, and I know what's going to happen is, they're gonna, well, we want to get flooded. Well, you know, it's not up to the fire department to have to do this. Mm -hmm. okay. And if they got the money, my question is, what have they done with it? They definitely haven't worked on it. Why and now the trees that? are starting to grow in on it, on the first corner. Why are you filling it so many times? Because it leaks? They plowed it with chains. They, they go on it with chains or before it's froze. All then, the way. With a snowblower right. machine. Right. And then they... And poke holes? Well, yeah, what happened was... The ice, surface, which yeah. makes it, they went on the first well, time and they broke the, the ice. ice. It was like this and it made humps and we couldn't... You couldn't just to renew the surface. Is right, but you can't fill it that full because there was no space to hold the water. It's not like we have a Zamboni down there to screw her up. <laughs> they used to have one. They used to have one. What happened to that one? They used to have one. They towed around a lawnmower. Yeah. But it's way too rough. I mean, it took us. Yeah. I mean, even Ray took Bobcat down. We tried cutting off the high spots before we flooded it, and you just couldn't do it. No, and we flooded it, like I said, mm -hmm. at least six times. Well, that's something we'll have to speak to. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, they haven't done any work on it, so it's not going to be... It's not going to be any different than it was. Nope. The only difference we can make on that is... is Somebody's got to be smart enough to not get on there with chains on. Right. Because even if it's frozen, at least smart. Right. Mm -hmm. Digs it up enough so it's rough. It's but, not good you know, my question was, they, there was a sizable donation that they could have done a lot of work to that. Skating ring, they aren't doing a thing. Think, didn't that donation go towards that liner that they bought? No, it was supposed. To, the liner was already raised. It was a, after the liner. We don't have an idea what's in that account, do we, ladies? Not off the top of my head. Not off the top. I know the donation was thousand dollars. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the liner was about a thousand dollars. The liner was already bought. Mm -hmm. Okay. The liner was bought and paid for after the, and they got this donation afterwards because they were going to give it to the fire department. Right. Yeah. And we all decided that it'd be better to put it into the skating ring to fix it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like I said, it's coming fall and yeah. I'm, I'm not going to play that game again this winter. So we'll have to have a conversation with Norm or, mm -hmm. yeah. or who's the other person on Dean that? Dean Mandel was part of it. Dean was a big part of it, yeah. So we'll have to bring that up with them. And who was plowing it last year? John Gordon. John Gordon, Gordon did it. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to have a conversation with him too. So what kind of work needs to be done to it now? Well, we're talking about raising it's got that. some pretty good holes in it that needs to be fixed around the drains. And the liner. No, the oh. liner. I don't know what how they did pick the liner up or where that it liner's is. A mess. I got an idea they didn't dry it, so it's probably And it's got holes in it. Yeah, it has a lot of holes where you got onto it with chains, spun, tore holes in the liner. <clears throat> but you need to, I don't know whether you can take a 4 before and, and bolt it on. You need to take a laser down, figure out where, see you where know, what things low, are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
but I think you could bolt down into that. You know, you that put burn. some th yeah. stuff right down in there. Yeah. Okay. And that would hold the liner up there so you could fill the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so you can get another, you another know. A couple inches in there. Yeah. yeah, because it's that one whole corner is worthless because it just breaks. I mean, mm -hmm. an inch of ice doesn't melt to nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't know, you know, whether they dried the liner out. Should have been dried before they rolled it up or else it's going to be... It's going to be a mess. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, it only had a three to five year lifespan anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you could... That liner wasn't much different than what they used to cover the corn. Yeah, it wasn't very good. You can buy them a lot cheaper than what they paid for. Right. If you can a lot get cheaper. it in the right color. Pretty much every one I've seen covers corn is white. Well, I see a lot of black ones. They used to be the Ford Mill. Yeah, but you go there. around now and they're all white ones. Are they now? Yeah. I mean, you go up and a good one is up there in Waitfield. Uh, <clears throat> up to the Priest? The Priest. Every one of theirs covered white. Yeah. White on one side, black on the other. So, I mean, it doesn't yeah. take nine sign to figure out. <laughs> right. <laughs> But, Be a rocket science. you know, because it's going to come down and everybody's going to start hollering, you know. Yeah, we want to skate, yeah. Because it does get used. It does, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's nice to have it. But I can't think of one fireman that uses it. Mm -hmm. All right. Did um, you and Zoom hear much of that, what <laughs> Terry was talking about? Some of it. Some of it, yeah. Just concerns about the um, skate space and the ex um, extent to which he, um, the fire department had to go down there six or eight times to flood it. Um, and a large result of the um, it being plowed with chains and also some deficiencies in the in the berm itself. So he's um, really encouraging. Um, the rec committee or who's responsible for that to to start taking some action now and not just wait till all of a sudden winter's here and expect it to to work well. well I think it's the rec committee. The rec committee, yeah. So, can I summarize that all right? Yeah, yeah. you did yeah. good. All right, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good job. All right. Um, anything else anyone would like to speak about tonight? Rob Gardner. Yeah, just I just like to point out the obvious that the audio situation on these Zoom things and and is, is pretty tough, and uh, I I think we may have talked last time about getting additional microphones in there, trying to, um, yep. uh, and I and I'm I can help you with that any way I can. I've got microphones I could bring down there and try them out, <clears throat> but anyway, without making a big deal out of it, I, I, it, it's really hard to hear a lot of what went on there today. Even even when you guys were talking, you were breaking up. Right. Uh, but Joan sounded fine, so the problem is there in a town office. Uh, yes, I agree. I, I'm just pointing that out. And, and any way that I can help you to try to figure out a better range, and I'm happy to do it. It's always going to be kind of clunky because it's Zoom. Yeah. But um, if you're going to have Zoom meetings like this, and I think it's a really good idea to have this because more people can show up if they do, um, that's something an area we probably should address, and that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, definitely agree. Totally agree with you, Rob. So do I. <laughs> well we've been um gathering information and, and about how to, to best go about it without breaking the bank and um we're yeah that's um it's time to start taking some actions on it all right yes yep uh, i think that is the extent of our um our agenda tonight and this is um, the shortest meeting we've had in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you all at home and in person and Orca for coming down. And um, we'll see you next time. So.